Are you tired of boring and plain textures? Today we'll go through mixing textures, adjusting nodes, and adding custom details to bring your models to life. So fire up Blender and let's get started. Start by importing the three essential maps, the albedo, roughness, and displacement map. Plug the albedo into the base color input of your principal BSDF. Click on your albedo image texture and press Ctrl T. This automatically adds the mapping and texture coordinate nodes. And make sure that the node wrangler add-on is enabled for this to work. Connect the mapping node to all of your textures. Plug the roughness map into the roughness input. Now create a displacement node. Then plug your displacement map into its height input. Finally connect the output of the displacement node to the material's displacement slot. Scale down the texture using the mapping node until it matches your model's dimensions. Now we will add some color variation to break up the repetition of the texture. Place a hue and saturation node between your albedo texture and the base color input to add color variation. Create a noise texture and press Ctrl T to add its mapping node. Add a color ramp node and connect it to the noise texture. This will serve as a mask to display color variations. Press Ctrl Shift left click on the color ramp to view the mask and adjust the detail slider as needed. Connect the output of the color ramp to the factor input of the hue and saturation node. Finally press Ctrl Shift left click on the principal BSTF node to preview the final output and adjust the value and saturation to break up the repeating texture pattern. Once satisfied with the texture, select all the related nodes and press Ctrl J to join them together. We can then find this later easily and tweak it if you want. Now import the second texture and set it up similarly. Connect the albedo to the base color, the roughness map to the roughness and pass the displacement map through a new displacement node. Use a mapping node to correctly scale this texture as well. Now if you hold Ctrl, Shift, right click and drag between two nodes, you can connect them together. Connect both principal BSTF nodes and the displacement outputs. To control the visibility, we will use a noise texture with its mapping node and a color ramp as a mask. Adjust the color ramp until you achieve the desired blend. Now connect the color ramp to the factor of both of these mix nodes. In the second texture's displacement node, slightly increase the mid-level to create the effect that this texture sits below the first. For greater control over where the second texture appears, hold Ctrl Shift left click and drag to disconnect the noise texture from the factor input. Create a new image texture, click new and rename it, and set its resolution. I recommend whatever matches your other textures. For me it's 2K. Now this is important. Make sure the alpha checks box is enabled, click on the color and set the alpha value to 0. Then plug this image into the factor input for both of these. Now select your image texture and switch the texture paint mode and use the material preview as this does not work in render view. Paint with a white brush to reveal the second texture. If you need to erase, press X on your keyboard to switch the brush color to black. For additional detail, import a brush texture via the texture settings on the right. In the brush settings, select your imported brush texture. Enable random rotation to add variation. Once you are happy with the result, 
we can now move on to the next texture because we can always come back and fix this later. Import the brick texture and set it up just like the previous textures. Use a noise texture as a mask to blend it in. Adjust the displacement nodes mid-level so that the brick texture appear below the other two. Now we can revisit and tweak the first color ramp until you are satisfied with the overall composition. Now let's add some leakage effects. Create a new image texture, rename it leakage and ensure the alpha is enabled. Set up a diffuse PSTF and connect the leakage texture to it. Now mix the diffuse PSTF with your main material using a mix shader. In Blender, the shader connected to the bottom socket appears on top, so ensure that the diffuse PSTF is in that position. Use the alpha channel of the leakage texture as the texture in the mix shader. Select the leakage image texture and switch to the texture paint mode. In the brush settings, create a new brush texture. Then in the texture tab, import any leakage image with an alpha channel. Now back in the brush settings, make sure that the texture is selected. Change the brush mapping from view plane to stencil. You can right click hold to move the stencil. Shift right click hold to scale the stencil. Control right click hold to rotate the stencil. Now that you know that, you can paint the leakage details where desired. If you overpaint, switch to erase mode using erase alpha. With this you can erase the harsh edges and any part that you don't want. Finally switch the image editor, click on image and save the texture manually as Blender does not auto save these images. Now to add some graffiti. Use the same method as we did for the leakage to add graffiti details to the building. To achieve a weathered effect, insert a math node between the alpha and the mix shader. Create a noise texture with a mapping node and a color ramp then plug these into the map node. Change the math node operation from add to subtract. This adjustment adds the variation and gives the graffiti a weathered, aged appearance. Now finally we can use the same techniques to create a ground texture by mixing different texture adjusting the mapping, noise and color ramps as necessary to achieve a natural warm look. And that's it, today we learned how to layer multiple textures and add depth and character to any model. I hope you found this tutorial clear and helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials.